Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. This one's gonna be some documentation on the new pole garage, pole building uh, that we put, put up. You may have already seen it in the end of the last video, but I got some footage, I'll slap it together, hopefully keep it interesting. And uh, so, so in the beginning here, you can see they're using a large rollback and he's kind of working the controls to wiggle all of the, the, uh, the lumber off of there. And then uh, we'll just dive right into these guys putting it together. Shout out to the company building it, Lancaster Pole Buildings. They had really good reviews. Hopefully everything comes out nice. Uh, I see their truck organized neatly, so that's a good sign. Aluminum trailer with, uh, look at the auger. It's like a, a 30 inch auger or something. Always a good sign when you see tools organized. I'm gonna try to stay out of here today. Just grab some coffee and sandwiches for them and I'll uh, let them kind of just do their thing. Here we are watching these guys work away, fast forwarded. Uh, crew of four, they're kind of a well lubricated machine. You see the guy up on the left is hanging girts. Over on the right, they're working on the skirt boards. My man in the red is kind of running cuts, whatever they, they call for. And now he's hanging hanging more girts, climbing up, OSHA approved. Uh, just, just getting it done. I, again, trying to stay out of their way as much because I know uh, these, these guys work together all the time and I would just be totally in their hair. So now they're, they're kind of making sure all those posts are, are squared up or, or level at the top, hitting them, see with the two by four. See the power line is hanging a little low too. That's gonna be addressed later. 15 minutes later, you see they got the header going up over the garage door opening. That's a 16 foot opening. And he's using nails and structural screws to hold it into place. You'll see some pole buildings, they actually notch out the posts or they'll put uh, lumber beneath it to support a header. But I guess uh, they kind of do things a little differently everywhere. And then the boards next to those, yeah, he's carrying that one up now on the left. That is called a girder, I believe. Uh, on the right, he's still doing girts. And down on the bottom left in the gray shirt, he's putting concrete uh, nails in the skirt boards into the concrete, the perma columns. Almost therapeutic to watch these guys work. And climbing up and down using all their stability muscles, getting just a, a great workout throughout the day. And uh, could almost do a, a full length video of this really, be kind of interesting. This is on people. We've got the trusses going up, 312 pitch on those, and good idea to, that they wrapped them on the ground before putting up the gable ends. Makes it much easier. And here we are, end of the first day. Now it's not quite uh, as huge as I thought it would be. Nice 12 foot wall, came out straight and true. Guys did a great job working. I tried to help them a little bit with lifting stuff like the concrete, not that they needed my help, just trying to be of slight assistance. Uh, but yeah, they, they did great work and this is how we're looking. So, so happy we went with the perma columns and we don't have to worry about the, the wood rotting out in the ground. It's got the pressure treated at the bottom. Concrete will be coming up a fair bit, of course. I went with three over 12 trusses and try to keep it a little bit lower. And so really this isn't much higher than the, the old garage. I mean, the old peak was actually just as high as that. So it's 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 uh it's not far off we did have to push up this power line a little bit i'll have to have pico come out and tighten that up with touch because otherwise it's going to be resting on the sheet metal i don't know how well you can see it uh they got us right on the exactly where the garage was before and gus is over here doing his sniff inspections what do you think buddy looking good huh tomorrow's going to be perlin's Vaporberry bubble wrap up on the roof, house wrap, sheet metal, and trim.
The big reveal. I haven't been in the garage yet. We are at the end of day two and all done. Oh, come down from the deck. You got this nice 12 foot beautiful wall. What do you think? Oh my gosh. It's uh, it's nice. I love it. You look around at the craftsmanship. I, I can't wow. find any flaws. They, they don't exist as far as I'm concerned. Oh, there's a, a wasp already. Yeah, trying to find a nice You're gonna, home. I can't get a, a floor and a garage door soon enough. What do you think, Gus? This is your new uh, arena for activities. There's some acoustics in here. A little bit, yeah. Hallelujah. It's got the double, the double. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hallelujah. No, I don't want to cut you off. You sound great. Uh, yeah, it's got the double bubble wrap on the top, building double wrap bubble. on the side, and just uh, just looking great. We're ready for a floor, and that's it. What did you find? You must be really thrilled. Yeah, no, totally stoked. Uh, on that note, you ready to help me move this lumber over here? Go get this. Oh yeah, I'd love to do that before I go work my shift. <laughs> no, I have to go to work. Some of us have to work around here. Gus, get it out now. You're not gonna be able to dig through concrete. Yeah, this is, oh, he found something, man. <laughs> he found a dinosaur fossil. One little baby step at a time. Today's plan is to get the rest of these boxes off the driveway, get this cleared, ready for tearing it up, and kind of just trying to figure out the overall grading. You know, since I'm not a professional, it's, it's very time consuming for me. But I did go ahead and start cutting this back and sloping it, because uh, you know this is considerably higher than the concrete here. And so during uh, downpours, the water will build up under there. So I've always been meaning to bring this down. I hate to take Gus's grass away. You can see underneath it is, it's just all sorts of junk. Like this is a brick. I think that's a brick. Yeah, a brick, which makes it tough for, for trying to grade this out. So I'll have to cut it back and then bring some topsoil. I also, uh, around these arborvitaes, I put these little blocks of wood in years ago. These are cedar, supposed to be, you know, pest resistant, but I started pulling them out and sure enough, look at all the termite damage. I mean, there's every type of bug you could imagine. And then I have a, a pest control coming out to kind of do an inspection and recommendation and treat this ground before putting down the concrete and around the house too, since you know, I just took away their, their old habitat. So many ants as I pull these up. I'm kind of putting the uh, you know, ant traps out from at the same time. Funny, I'll put these inside the house sometimes if I see an ant and they like never go inside of them. They're going crazy for it outdoor though. These, these ants are, are hungry. Quick clip, we had a big rain yesterday and water did exactly what I wanted it to do. It all pulled on the back corner there. Still gotta put some kind of drainage in, but uh, some did come in and Actually, when it was raining, there was like two inches of water in here. It eventually drained out to the low spot. You see where I just had my truck parked. Look at that. And so everybody says, you know, put the four inches of three quarter clean, but I feel like your subgrade should be higher and compacted before doing that. That way, when it rains, you don't invite the water in. If I had the drainage done back there, I don't think this ever would have happened and we wouldn't have ended up with this, this muddy mess. I don't care if you throw stones on that or not. We're gonna have to let that dry because now the water's soaked into the clay. It's just, it's junk. You need to turn back into hard pack like that. Several weeks later and it's update time. We took a little vacation, went down there for the power tour to Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, awesome meeting some of you guys. That was a really fun time. Uh, but now it's back to work. Been feeling a little under the weather. However, I'm hoping we can knock this concrete out 
in the next week. I finally pulled the trigger and hired Harry Scansella. I, I talked to many different people and he, he gave me the most confidence and was super cool. He actually lent me his dump truck uh, to lay the stone today as well. So before I do that, I just wanted to give you a quick, quick update, you know. I think last time you saw was when it rained and the water backed up, filled the whole garage and it was just a mushy, muddy mess of like six inches of, of just nastiness. So what I, I did at that point, I dug a little uh, swale around the whole building and ran the, the dirt up against it. Uh, you can see I did go ahead and tar coat all the wood first on all sides of it because you know I hate wood in the ground. You can see I also nicked the building with my my uh, Kubota as I was digging all of this out. I, I brought this down probably a good oh I don't know six inches or so because it was just a lot higher here and the water was running right into that site. So now we got a nice slope into that swale, ran it back up on the building. Sorry if we're jumping around this whole video is that way. And you know, it's got a slope on the whole thing. So that brought us down pretty low and to prevent my neighbor's soil from running in, I just put up this temporary little gate, whatever, you know, hey, I'm not a professional guys, but uh, now when it rains, the water runs all the way back here and I'll probably be filling this in with like goose egg or something in the future but for now it goes into this little basin where it does fill up pump kicks on and it runs over to my storm drain at some point later I'll probably run this out the back because before what was happening is the water all built up here and then ran into the garage and over in the building you can see after several rains we've had it is not a muddy mess anymore it still does stay a little bit uh, wet over here but it's not play-doh like it was before so we're keeping the water out of the building now which is what you want for the subgrade see i decided to tar coat the posts as well to prevent staining and water wicking up through level overkill probably unnecessary and then this is the rubberized expansion joint really good stuff this is way way better than the uh, the fiber boards that that stuff deteriorates super quick this is recycled rubber definitely spend the extra money and get that if you're ever doing a concrete job i mean in my opinion though so i just ran the laser level on this whole whole area and this is about to lay the stone out up to the silver line on these sticks so we'll have anywhere from like five inches to as much as six inches and uh, yeah that's what i'm gonna do today so i think that pretty much brings you guys up to date he's got some crushed concrete in here i'll lay this out first and then we'll go get three quarter clean there's a couple low spots anyway you know actually we'll lay that over in the, the wetter area i'm really glad i let the building settle for this long because i again i made marks after the first day this was built with the laser and then i rechecked those there's been no settling on either post anywhere on this it's nice straight true the way it was the ground has firmed up and we know water's not getting in there no matter what bit didn't get us very far time to go get some stone uh, and I know you're supposed to compact this every like two inches or so as you put down stone but I'm just kind of running the bucket back over it as we go because I don't have a, a plate tamper right now so we'll just we'll just hit it once with the tamper before we do the concrete you know, this f550 has got the 6.8 v10 got some balls runs really really smooth uh, it's not bad. It's, it doesn't really feel trucky though. It doesn't feel like a truck should, you know? Probably because it's missing the manual transmission. And it weighs empty 10,800. Maybe should have went with like three or four tons. Hopefully this thing can dump. Guess we'll push the mountain off the top and throw the cover on to be safe. That'll do it. 
This uh, covered ratchet, it's kind of cheesy, you know? I feel like stuff back in the day. I mean, we always say it, it was just built so much better. 22,800. Lugging up the hill with that load. You know, $37 a ton, came out to $234. Woo! Pricey for stone. The other dog keeps digging under the fence next door. Oh, I thought this was your new landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> no, I figure I don't want Gus to get murdered by Doug. Apparently Doug doesn't play too well with other dogs and he's been digging under. Oh. So he ain't moving those. What do you think of it? Yeah, it looks good. Doesn't I, it? Recycle them. I don't know why they don't use these for pavers. I don't know either. I mean, they're not that strong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Especially when they get hot, they bend. You don't think it looks good? No, babe. Oh, come on. <laughs> what if we paint him? What are you doing, crazy one? By the way, he doesn't have his ramp anymore because he didn't really like it, so we, we kind of got rid of it for now. Seems to prefer going down the steps. Here's another look at that grating. I'm sure you guys don't remember what it looked like before, but it took a lot of material out. And uh, something else I forgot to mention to you is I did go ahead and dig a little trench. Uh, on the other side there. Concrete. Everywhere. And I laid some two inch PVC conduit just in case I have to run some maybe communication wires in the future or other power or something. I mean, it runs into the basement. I, I wanted to run sewer and water in here and Jen keeps reminding me how this is not our forever home. So stop getting crazy with it. Just get the building done. Uh, I was even talking about renting a mini excavator and digging a hole and dropping a, a septic in here. And not for sewage, but for a bunker or underground storage. I could even dig a tunnel out to the basement. Ah, possibilities are endless. But yeah, I mean, the truth is, is why I do all that when, yeah, I just don't have enough space here. So get the project done. That's five tons down. Definitely gonna need another five. Give me that, drop that boy. Drop that. What do you got? Oh, he's got a grass clump. <laughs> drop that. And here's where we're at. Pretty much where it needs to be at the edges. And it looks like it is in the center too, but I just lasered it out. And we're actually about three inches low in most, most everywhere except for the edge. Uh, so I just went and got five more tons, maybe a little bit more than we need, but not a big deal. I'll just use it for back here or wherever else. And that, that'll be it. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the day figuring that all out, putting the rubber stripping on the sides and being done with it. I did notice uh, on this dump body, this truck is a 2021 and look it's already it's doing that thing that all these trailers and and bodies do that they they don't primer it's rusting and bubbling under there one little hole and now the salt gets in there the water gets in and well, i'm not gonna poke it off now but i don't know how well you can see i mean it's just it's done it's doing it all over on this 
What a shame. They all ought to start uh, primering and painting stuff again because that is unacceptable. It is a tight squeeze coming through here. I uh, actually uh, nicked the house once as well. I mean, you have like an inch to spare on that side. And you got a couple inches here, but if you get too close, uh, oh, see, a rookie move totally would have just hit. I forgot to fold this handle in, but even with that, it still sticks out quite a bit more than anything else on the truck. I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but uh, you see anything wrong with the siding on this side? And it's Dutch lap, except for on the bottom. Somebody replaced the bottom with the whatever that's called. I think this is Dutch lap, and that's something else. Something lap. All right, I'm gonna drop this truck off. You see we're averaging 6.0 miles per gallon. Hoo hoo hoo. Now I just returned the truck and I saw this old place, Mazanti's Market. Looks real classic. So I went to order a hoagie because it says home, home of the world famous Italian hoagie, still only $23. I went to order with lettuce, tomato, onion, mayo. He says, no, 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 you'll get tomatoes on it. I'll give you mayo on the side. I said, uh, all right, let's, let's give it a go. You can't go inside the place, that's all he has. And then uh, this is what I get. A little giant mammoth Italian hoagie. And he said, I was talking to him, he said he refuses to put mayo on it because it'll ruin the, the provolone. He said the $30 a pound for the provolone. He said, try it without the mayo first. Very insistent on that. You want some of it, don't you? Oh boy. Woo! Check that out. That is a real Italian hoagie. Well, I guess Jen is busy, so you're the first one that gets to try the $30 a pound provolone. Oh, you like that, huh? That's good stuff. Well, that's all we have left out of about 17 tons. So after compacting it with the machine, maybe have to fill in a few spots. We'll see. Uh, but do you guys notice an issue? It's not even dark out and the garage is so dark in here. So I'm going to give these a go. Hyperlight reached out, asked if they could send over some lights. I said, absolutely. I've seen these in a lot of other uh, videos. They seem to work pretty well. Now these are the 100 watt high LED Baylight Hero series. My first glance at these, I'm thinking that they seem very high quality and you know, simple installation. You just thread this guy on, it's an aluminum hook. I do recommend put some Loctite, but then again, it actually has a little set screw right there. So you wouldn't want this swinging down and hitting you in the head. But then again, even if that broke, yeah, it comes with a little aircraft cable lan lanyard. Uh, these are dimmable too. And these are the 100 watt 5K version. Now they do have up to, I think 250 watt same style light. These are like the, the lower end ones. And then for the carport, they sent me these guys, which are the capsule series LED vapor tight light. Actually in the back of the instructions, they show all the different lights they have. So I will drop a link to their website down below if you wanna check them out. Uh, you see the installation is such a breeze, has these stainless steel clips all the way around. And these guys, you would just screw up into a rafter or ceiling. And then you simply snap the light right up into the clip. And that's actually locked in pretty good. Now these capsule lights are hardwired and these guys plug and play. Anyway, let's go hang these and see if there's any difference in lighting. I got the lights installed. Here is the first lighting of the new garage. Here we go. All five of them in. Whoa! Woo! Holy smokes! What do you think? Wow. Wow. That is, uh, that's impressive out of only five lights. What? I'm blown away. That, isn't that impressive? I need to get my sunglasses. I know. Well, you can't look up at them, that's for sure. Holy smokes. But if you clips. keep your eyes down here, whoosh, that looks good. Looks like some shoddy grading work. Definitely got to get back on that with a screed board or something and make it more uniform. Checking for new sniffs with the big rocks. Anything good? Uh, yes, they're super bright now. However, don't forget they are dimmable. So I'll have to install some dimmers in the future because yeah, right now it's just, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> For the vapor tight lights, I threw them in the carport, just kind of facing up actually. It works pretty well since the white 
on the, the ceiling reflects all that. Uh, I mean, it ain't perfect, but I daisy chained them together and that works temporarily for now. Cause I didn't want to hang them off the, these two inch squares because it's super tight getting the airboat in here and you're pretty much like quarter inch from hitting those. So that'll work for now. Nice and bright. Now out here next day, he's running the plate tamper across this whole thing. We'll get graded a little bit better. Perfect, should I say. Or order extra concrete, one or the other. And then uh, just hung all the rubber membranes. Expansion joint, whatever you want to call it. Put around these concrete posts, I was using the roll roofing adhesive. Uh, that's taking a while to tack up, so I might have to get some concrete anchors or something. Put that on good. He brought his GoPro inside, so I can't help myself. Look at him, he's tamping away. It's pouring out. Oops. Hey babe, look at you. You're like from the notebook. <laughs> and some rain moved in. Check out this little drainage area. I'm actually worried this is gonna wash out the, the side because of the steep angle. It's supposed to rain all week. But uh, yeah, check it out. A better look on this side. But yeah, see, so it's all running in, which again, right now it has the sump pump keeping it it's good. And a lot of water coming off. And then that pumps over to my storm drain. Well, here's where we got today. Uh, I ran into a few hiccups. The leveling of the stone I did ended up not being perfect. Uh, there was a few areas where it was only gonna be four inches of concrete. So we had to use his laser, go back all this and, and take out a few scoops with the Kubota. We got it all good. And, and all that rubber hung up. Uh, the, the next big obstacle we had was he started laying this rebar. We're doing number four, 16 on center. Uh, even though I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, just use wire, it's fine. I don't like the wire because you really don't know where it sits into the pad and could be too high, too low. Most often it sits on the bottom, especially from the videos I've seen that people don't, you know, they don't pull it up right all the time. Uh, but he had these three inch chairs and with the, the half inch rebar stacked on top of each other, these bars were way too high. So uh, these chairs ended up actually making these two little sticks and went like this. Uh, first I started with these two wedges and then added the blocks, essentially running the length of each one uh, to spread them and squat them down uh, to do the sections he already did. And then I grabbed a few stacks. I oh, was able to do three at a time. So that worked well and is gonna be sitting the rebar right around the middle of the concrete, maybe a touch less, but that's, that's right where you want it. You don't want it up at the top. Vapor barrier looks good. Gonna finish the rebar Monday and then the pour is scheduled for Tuesday. Gonna be using a pumper truck, well, pumper trailer so the truck can dump into instead of having a, well, he had a buggy. Originally, we weren't gonna do this because you can't drive the buggy over top of the chairs. It'll just bend them all. Uh, but uh, I think that the pump was the, the way to go. Today is pour day. Here's a look at the little pumper trailer. Dump it in and then this, uh, this guy just keeps that in the hopper full. Yeah, running down the driveway, you know, instead of trying to get a concrete truck in here, you see this hose. Hopefully that holds together. That'd be terrible. That blew out, huh? Got a bunch of uh, chafing around the whole thing. And I see the garage door came yesterday, so we got that in. And here's how it looks coming out of the hose. Uh, came out here last night, made sure this rebar was all uh, about three inches of concrete on top of it. All the ties pushed down and uh, just, just rechecked everything. But hopefully it comes out good today. You can see he's got his laser set up the whole time. So he can kind of keep dropping that in, sitting on top and just making sure we get the pad right where it needs to be. Here's a glance at that new garage door. They were able to get, get it up pretty high. So, you know, if it ever becomes a problem in the future, you can always switch to a roll up, but that's a nice insulated door. We banged this thing out super quick. It was a very reasonable price 
included with the building too versus just going to buy my own. Okay. We good. was the second load now really loose slump on the second load but hopefully hopefully it uh, turns out good and holds up over time I did take a few samples so maybe send those out and check the, the PSI of them instead of doing a ledge where the garage door sits gonna do we kind of drop this down about three quarter inch so from where the pad is slopes down a little bit that way the rain won't run under it but also kind of you know keep the rain from, from going under the door into the garage started downpouring for a little bit there so we uh, clamped up a tarp through two by four as that works see i ended up with quite a bit of concrete uh but we did order extra build all these uh, because i wanted to fill of this little guy so i'm gonna try my hand at, at uh, finishing this actually well i screeded it and it looks like he just hit it recently uh coming out good got a lot of slope because the grass is higher over there but don't ask me why I'm continuing this pad. I figure it's just, uh, you know, know, makes me feel better. I suppose I could clean this out and make it Gus's new pool. Okay. Look inside the... Oh, wow. Oh, that's... Okay, got you. It's in reverse. Oh, you can see the pistons going. That's pretty cool. Look at that. This was seen about ninety thousand dollars new. Yeah. Wow. Well, you can see these pump trailers are great, but they do create a little bit more of a mess. We had to dump some water out back there, and you know, you end up with this. But it certainly makes it easier laying out the concrete. Prints on there. It's already burnt. Go get it, guys. <laughs> so I decided to do a line off at each post, keeping it in little like eight foot sections. And he's got this wet stall that is designed to cut the concrete when it's still green. Or if that's the right term. We got the depth set at around an inch and three sixteenths. Generally, you want it to cut in about 25% of the thickness of the pad. So like one inch if it was four inch pad. And the idea is as this whole pad shrinks, it will hopefully crack in those control joints. Of course, the rebar is going to hold everything together. Um, hoping these lines don't interfere with where the lift is going to be. I don't have that set in stone exactly where that was going to go. So yeah, it won't be a problem either way. And this little pad under the deck came out nice too. He went ahead and finished that uh, probably better than I would have. So I think he might even hit it one more time. Yeah, I still touch tacky. Had some more storms rolling in, but luckily all finished. Here is the final product. Ran those salt cuts all the way to the walls. This little bevel on the edge came out perfect. You can see it's got a good shine to it. I'm hoping it's cured enough where this downpour is not going to 
really matter, but definitely gonna pull the door shut. I suppose you guys didn't even see this new door. Look at that, one hand. And it's, uh, it's dialed in where you can just, I mean, you can lift this with, with a pinky. Of course, those springs will break in a touch. And the opening came out perfect, as far as I can see. Nice and straight. And there's that edge on the outside. I think I'm gonna grab a tarp and just clamp it over in case it really starts hammering down on it. Yeah, I'm glad I covered that up because without a gutter, it comes down pretty hard. Ooh, nice and toasty in here. Crack open a beer in the new garage. You can hear it pretty noisy without insulation up there. Quite a bit of an echo too. Gonna have to correct that. And with this salt, since he cut when it was green, you see there's two little cracks on that corner. And unfortunately, these two corners I can see blew out too, but whatever, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna be so abusive on this. Uh, again, this, this side was that, that loose slump, so I, I hope the PSI is gonna be all right on that. You know, it's not like, there's not much I can do about it at this point. I feel like the second load probably should have been sent back, honestly, it was just, but who am I? What, what do I know? What? How did you get in here? It was an ant. A couple hours later and the severe weather is gone. This is fully hardened so I can keep the door open now, which is good because this concrete is getting toasty. It's, uh, well, it was up to 95 before. It's at 86, 87 now. And I think uh, I was reading the ideal temperature is 50 to 90 degrees for it to cure properly. I do plan to wet cure this. I say, if you can keep this wet, for the first like seven days, it can be twice as strong. So um, since we had kind of a looser slump, uh, anything I can do to get the PSI up, I will do. Uh, a few methods, you can hose it down several times a day and try to keep it moist, but you can see how quickly that's all evaporating. And it was actually a sauna in here before I opened this door. Uh, another way is putting down like burlap, soaking that, put plastic on top so that'll help the concrete retain the moisture. That's the idea, you, you just wanna you know, keep the, the moisture in the concrete. You can see after hosing this down, it's actually pretty darn flat in here. We, we have a couple little high spots uh, that dry up quicker, but totally, totally uh, acceptable. And another method I ran into is called pond curing, which I think we'll give that a stab because if we close the door, we pretty much can fill this up. We'll let that run for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes and see how much is dumping out the door. Uh, is this overkill? Some of you might be thinking, yeah, probably, because uh, plenty of garages are poured and nobody does any wet curing or anything like that. But, you know, it uh, brings me a little peace of mind to do as much as I can to make sure this, this pad is going to be as strong as it can be. Another thing with the moist curing a pad is it helps prevent all the cracking and little cracks that might appear on the surface. And so we try to avoid that. The idea is we just want to keep the concrete hydrated, which I think actually slows down the curing process, but makes for stronger concrete. I don't plan on putting the lift in for 28 days. I'm gonna you know, follow the book on that one. Well, it turns out the ponding technique is not really gonna work without major modification because the water's going out the door and furthermore around the whole perimeter of my little rubber joints, it's just running out of there. But it did give me a, a good opportunity to wet this whole thing down and you can see little, little bird baths all around, nothing major. I mean, it's, it's low back here. And then, well, this is probably the most important pond because I think the lift is going right here, but you can see that's about variant, you know, I guess we call that about three eighths. The pad is right here, three eighths lower. So, you know, not super stoked about that, uh, but it is what it is. It's funny, when it's dry, I mean, you can't tell at all, but you, you put the water in here and you gotta think it's dry here now, so what's the difference between that pool and right here? Pro probably half inch overall. I don't know, what, what do you guys think? Acceptable for uh, flatness? I, 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 I could, it could be flatter. That would be my opinion on that. But what do I know? I'm not a concrete guy. I'm just a, a Googler, right? And a mechanic. So uh, I'm surprised if anybody's even still watching this. I'm kind of, you know, just, just learning and rambling on. Uh, d did you know that ponding does in three days what just moisting it, you know, spritzing it does in seven days? So if you're able to flood this whole thing, it's definitely gonna, uh, it, it wet cures it faster, apparently. That's what Google says.
Also, did you guys notice anything wrong with these joints minus the, the little broken pieces? And this one, it never got done. <laughs> So I'm about to snap a chalk line on here and uh, zip that out the rest of the way with a hand grinder. What are you doing to me, Harry? It's like midnight. Now I gotta wake my neighbors up with a grinder. No, nah, but seriously, thumbs up, Harry. You, you did a great job on this floor. It, it came out awesome. I'm hoping that it holds up. So minus the bird bath over there. Oh, slipped in the pond, you all right? Snap it, you okay? Yeah, that should be your first question. It was. Beautiful. I actually just picked up this Milwaukee grinder and I really like that it has the break. Look at that. Uh, it was 200 something bucks. Price a unit, but uh, these are great tools. That looks better. All complete. Ended up going with plan B to keep it wet. Jen got me some sheets and blankets from the closet. And we <laughs> laid a bunch of those out and got some plastic. Triple layering, the, triple layering it over, that'll keep her wet. You know, cause these, these will kind of lock the moisture in and then the plastic keeps it in there. Pretty much a pond, actually. Do, uh, do other people do this or is it just overkill? I don't know, you know, <laughs> probably a little overkill, but it it's it's good. I think it's, I mean, I can still, see how much water that's holding under there, it's great. Yeah. Well, I can come out here and water it tomorrow and not have to be coming out 10 times a day hosing it like this. Everybody day. comes and waters their concrete. Gotta water your concrete. Good enough. Wait, you want me to cut around these posts? I, want I don't to. want to, because I'll, I'll keep the plastic for something else, so I'll, I don't want to cut it. The majority of it's covered. That's all that matters. Oh, we'll keep that on for seven days. And then 28 days till we put the lift in. Did you know bush light comes in bottles? Everybody knows that, baby. No, they don't. I didn't know that. Well, that's gonna wrap up this pole garage overview video. I know there was a ton of talking, but I just tried to kind of document what I did and the obstacles I ran into and such. Uh, next is gonna be gutters coming this week. Got a seamless gutter guy coming out. I gotta do rip this up and pull the trigger on probably doing asphalt save a little bit of money with doing that and then uh, finish the grading around the building i can't believe how much rain we've been getting lately it's it's crazy and run that drain out the back all the above but for now i uh, got a job to go head to in croydon so that'll probably be a little video a lady's got a few cars that she wants to get running and shipped out to indiana so back to getting some wrenching done while that is curing thanks so much for tuning in guys Really appreciate you, and hopefully you uh, found this video informative, or probably not too entertaining, uh, but we'll see you in another one very soon. Uh, I know it's been a couple weeks since I posted, and, and sometimes there's a lot of comments. They're like, oh, well, I'm done with this channel. I'm unsubscribing. Since you're not posting, I'm gonna go to somebody who actually posts videos like Vice Grip Garage. I see all these crazy comments pop up. I mean, there's not like tons of them, but I, I don't I don't have a, a posting schedule, you know? I, I work a lot of other side jobs i do lots of stuff and i'm not gonna you know record videos if it doesn't if i don't feel like there's something good to share or it doesn't feel natural or if i'm sick or whatever it just doesn't make sense to anyway all that rambling done i'll see you guys soon no nonsense no how over out